Right, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We're going to look at a very famous passage, but uh, we're going to look at it a little bit differently today. Matthew chapter 25, we're going to read the first 13 verses. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the prudent took oil and flask along with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight there was a shout, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the prudent, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent answered, saying, No, there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. And later the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. But he answered and said, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert then, for you do not know the day nor the hour. Today we're going to look at three Ps. We're going to look at preparation needed, the party enjoyed, and punishment received. And so the first thing we're going to look at is preparation needed. And I want to go through and look at Matthew chapter 25, and we're going to look at what each of these things represents. You have the kingdom of heaven. We can see that that represents Christ's church. Then we have the bridegroom. You can see that the bridegroom comes... Um, and at midnight, the bridegroom represents Jesus. The bridegroom delaying represents the unexpected hour of Jesus' return. Midnight represents judgment day, and the day that no one knows when they will come. And you have the wedding feast, which they were all trying to get into, which represents heaven. And then you have the door being shut, and that's the gate being closed on those that do not obey the Lord. But today I want to focus on the lamp and the oil. What about the lamp and the oil? We don't really give this much consideration, but that's what I want to focus on today. So what do the lamp and the oil represent? If you would, please turn to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 14 through 20. James says, Why use it, my brethren, if a man says he has a lamp, but he has no oil? Can that lamp save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is that? Even so a lamp, if it has no oil, is dead, being by itself. But someone may well say, You have a lamp, and I have oil. Show me your lamp without the oil, and I will show you my lamp by my oil. You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that a lamp without oil is useless? Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not, exact, that's not what James actually says. But that's the exact point that he's trying to get across. That a lamp without oil is just as much useless as faith without works. It's easy to see that all ten virgins wanted to get into the wedding feast. They all wanted to see the bridegroom. However, only those that had their lamps and their oil, or their faith and their works, were allowed to enter. Now, we know that not everyone who says to him, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Wanting to see the bridegroom does not get you into the wedding feast. Being prepared by your actions is what gets you in. Now that we have seen the preparation needed with faith and works, let's look at the party enjoyed. Now, during the first century, engagements, or betrothals as they were called, were a little different than today. <coughs> After the bridegroom would get engaged, he would go to his father's house, and he would start adding on to his father's house. And when he was finished with the house, he would come back, and he would take his bride. They would get married, and then they would go live in the added part of, his, of, the, of the groom's father's house. Now, that's kind of like our relationship with Christ. That's exactly like our relationship with Christ. We are Christ's bride, as you can see from Ephesians chapter 5. Christ has left us, and he has gone to prepare a place for us. And he has gone to prepare a place for us to live with the Father. We don't know when he will return, but when he does, he will take us to live with him in his Father's house. And just like the five virgins that were prepared for the wedding feast, those that had their oil, we too will be allowed in the wedding feast as long as we have oil in our lamps, as long as we have works with our faith. Unfortunately, not everyone's going to be allowed in. And some will have, and this brings me to the third point, the punishment received. 
First, I would like to point out that your service to the Lord does not end until He comes. Notice that the foolish virgins had their lamps burning at first, but after a period of time, it ran out. We must stay in service to the Lord until He comes. Secondly, you cannot purchase your salvation through someone else. In verses 8 and 9, the foolish virgin, virgins were trying to get oil from the wise virgins, but we know that that's not acceptable. It is up to each individual, it is up to you and me individually to be prepared to be ready for the Lord. I can't get it from someone else. And last of all, you cannot purchase your salvation once the bridegroom has come. As you can see from 10, verses 10 and 12, See, once Jesus made his return, there is not another chance. Once the bridegroom makes his return, there is not another chance. The door is shut, and that's the last straw. He will answer and say, I do not know you. But that punishment received can be avoided. That punishment received can be avoided if you just have faith with your words, if you're prepared, and if you're ready for the bridegroom to come. And I think that's the purpose of this passage. That faith without works is useless, just as a lamp without oil is useless. And since we do not know that the day the bridegroom will make his return, we must constantly have our lamps burning with our work for the Lord.